are you thinking about living in Raleigh, North Carolina? Maybe you are thinking about living here, but then you got a job offer in Georgia and now you're like, wait, where am I going? I know I have to move, but am I going to Raleigh? Am I going to Georgia? Well, in this video, we are going to give you some pros and tips of both living in Raleigh and in Georgia so you can decide for yourself what's best for you and your family, so stay tuned. Welcome back. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Joanna Nin. I am here in the Raleigh, North Carolina area and I have a very special guest with me. Her name is Karin Carr and she's a top agent in Savannah. And we are going to go through pros and cons, which one is better if there's anything like that. I don't think better might be the best word. However, um, we are both servicing the area and we've been real estate agents for many, many years. So we know the ins and outs. What is it to live here, to play here, to go to school here, to have a house here, to have a job here. So here we are, Karin. Tell me a little bit about yourself and tell me about living there and the real estate and what's been happening in the past months because here it's been kind of crazy. Well, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that in mid 2020, people started relocating to the Southeastern United States like crazy. They went to Texas, they went to Idaho, they went to North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. Um, people were moving here for a lot of reasons, but I think they figured if they are going to be stuck at home working remote, why not live somewhere where they actually want to live? Because remote is remote. You could live 10 miles away from the office or you could live three states away. What's the difference? And people decided that they could get a lot more bang for their buck housewise. They had a better quality of life. There was less traffic, better weather, all of the things. So our market exploded. It became extremely competitive, multiple offer situations. It was kind of out of control for a little while there, but over the summer, it has started to settle back down. It is still a seller's market here, but it is not nearly as competitive now as it was say six months ago. What about you? Very similar. And I think that's where people are going between coming to North Carolina or Georgia, because I think I've been to Savannah several times and I love it. To be honest, I love downtown Savannah more than I love downtown Raleigh. Um, just honest truth. Um, it's more European. I like the vibe. I like the boutiques. I like the just everything. The ambiance is really cool. Um, and I think a lot of people, like you said, had to determine where to go. Um, and so because of how similar our markets were, um, I'm not sure about the price point, so I definitely want to touch on that because here the pricing has just in increased like crazy, especially after um, Barbara Corcoran mentioned on, on an interview on TV that Raleigh is the place where she would invest. And after, after Apple, announced they're coming here and bringing like 3,000 jobs that would be like paying 193K. Things have just exploded. So Apple, Barbara mentioned Raleigh on her interview. So it just kind of like that. However, um, we still got a lot of calls from people that are relocated, uh, were relocating. And it was a very interesting situation for us because they were not sure where to go, right? And so we had to give them advice on this area and then say, okay, well, if you're going to another state, these are the pros here. Those might be the pros, literally comparing. So we've had at least 20 transactions in the past two years that came from people relocating from a lot from California, a lot from Florida, and just coming, like you said, south, southeast, and not really knowing where to go. And so the market was the same, very competitive. You have you had to have a lot of cash above ask price. And also, this is one of the big cons, I feel, for a lot of people, and I want to know how it is there in housing. Here, you had to have a big down payment, which is called the due diligence fee. And people were really thrown off by that fee because that fee in this state, if you decide to walk away for any or no reason, you lose. So guess what? People are So like, hold on. I want to ask a question about this. So I write an offer on your house and yeah. due diligence is when I am allowed 
X number of days to do a home inspection, look at the roof, do a termite inspection, all of those things. I have to pay a non-refundable fee in order to be able to do those inspections. And then if I decide I don't want the house anymore, I lose that fee. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. So we don't have that here. Come on down to Georgia. Come on to Georgia. Imagine the buyer coming from other states going, wait, what? So now you're telling me I have to put how much down? Not 5,000 or 500. They thought initially that I was joking, that I was mispronouncing. I'm like, no, I know English is not my first language, but it's, it's not that bad. I understand 5,000 or 50,000 or 500,000. So that is a big cons. And everybody, I had at least three or four people that said we're not, we're not capable mentally to buy a house virtually, not seeing the house, putting this money back, and, and knowing that the, the, the seller is going to keep thirty thousand or fifty k out of our money if we decide to walk away for any or no reason. Again, it doesn't have to be a major reason, and you're just going to lose it. So that is a big cause why people were going towards other states. Um, and so, yeah, that's 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 interesting with the market, and it threw off a lot of investors as well because probably just like in Georgia, I don't know, maybe forty percent of our closings were sight unseen. They were. Did that come? Did that come about after the whole COVID situation, where people were moving to your state and they were writing offers sight unseen, mm -hmm. and maybe people were getting into contract on multiple properties just so they could have their choice. And then they were canceling it was it in reaction to something like that no that no wow that has always been part of our offer to purchase some contract wow okay the well amounts, the amounts were tripled or quadrupled it just turned into a really really big math house and so no always has been there and it makes north carolina a very difficult and a new new perception new process and a lot of people need to mentally first agree to buying the house even though financially and economically and job wise they're ready to come but and and you have to have the money too so even if you let's say Karin, you were to come here and say joanna i qualify to buy a house at one million i'm good to go um however you know i didn't sell my house yet and i would need the proceeds from my house um, six months ago, I would say, okay, do you have about $200,000 in your account at the moment? And people are like, well, no, because we're just selling our house. So we don't have all that money into our account. And it, it would be on me to tell them you need to have that money. Otherwise it's almost impossible for me to get you on the contract. So that's, that's, that's the situation. So that's a big cons and that's a big pro pro for you guys. You don't have that. Your buyers can walk away and then they get their money back. That is true. We have in Georgia is very much a, um, it's a buyer beware state. So it really is up to the buyer to do as many inspections as they want. But during right. their due diligence period, they could wake up one morning and say, it's raining today. I don't want to buy a house anymore. And they would be entitled to get their earnest money back. They can truly cancel for any reason at all, as long as it's within their due diligence period. Got it, got it. So tell me, tell me a little bit more about the housing right now, so we can kind of just slowly sh shift into what's happening now and how do you see those buyers that are relocating. And for all of you guys watching, pay attention because again, these are super cool states. So what's the big change now, and how do you see the pricing and all of that um, today? We are in uh, <laughs> almost at the end of the year, October. Well, Savannah is oceanfront. A lot of people don't really know that. When they think of Georgia, they think of Atlanta, which is very much inland, but Savannah is on the coast. And considering that we can and considering that we are an oceanfront city, I still think it's very, very affordable compared to pretty much anywhere in Florida, definitely mm -hmm. anywhere in California, mm -hmm. and even a lot less expensive than South Carolina and North Carolina. So our median sales price pre-COVID was well below 300,000. Today, I pulled up our stats. Mm -hmm. The average sales price in Chatham County, which is where Savannah is, along with all of the other surrounding suburbs, the average sales price is only 413,000. So to be able to live somewhere 
where mm -hmm. you get a good sized house in a city that has an airport, an international airport. Mm -hmm. We have dining, we have, like you said, it's a really cool vibe downtown. It kind of reminds me of New Orleans. It's got like that right. spooky haunted sort of feel to it. Right. But then the beach is right there as well. And to be able to live there for, you know, $400,000 is pretty affordable. All right, you guys. So both everything that Karin said right now is right on same thing here in Raleigh. However, we're not on the beach. Big thing. There's a bunch of lakes here. You can go to Jordan Lake, um, Foz Lake. There's a lot of uh, opportunities. You are two hours away from the beach, right? You can go to Wilmington. You can go to Myrtle, but we're not on the beach. However, um, the the price is right on we're, we're at 400,000 but let me ask you one thing that might differentiate us besides the fact that you guys are on the coast which is unbelievable um what do you get for 400 okay you get a bigger house than what you would get in california you get a you know more uh, more land maybe more bedrooms and all of that but do you actually get a newer home an older home where is that 400,000 dollars because here in raleigh in Cary, for example, we have several suburbs. We have Cary, Apex, Holly Springs. Also, we have Durham, Chapel Hill, University Towns, right? So we have Duke University, NC State, QNC, Chapel Hill, some of the best universities in the nation. Also, our DU International Airport. But for $400,000, you can get some townhomes. You can get maybe some Lenar, some Meritage, some Caruso homes, some newer construction that is kind of popping up and has been popping up. But a house, like let's say our common questions are, or, or needs from our buyers are 3,000 square feet, four bedrooms with an office, ideally an in-law suite. We want a little bit of land. Maybe we want chickens. Maybe we want to have a dog and a yard. Do you get that for 400? Because here it's not very, you can't really get a newer home in Raleigh for that. Forget it. It's not happening. Even though the median price for the county is that, so the numbers don't lie, but what type of house do you get for that money? It's a different question. Well, that's a really good question. If you're looking in Savannah itself, the houses are going to be older. The downtown Savannah area is historic. I mean, we have houses that are 200 years old. If you go to the south side of Savannah, you're probably looking in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 1960s when these were built, the 1970s. And as you go out closer to the ocean, those are older as well. That was the area that was first developed. As the city grew, they expanded more on the west side of town, more on the inland side of town. And that's where all the new construction is. So I just ran a quick search and I said, show me everything that sold in the last 90 days and show me everything that was built after the year 2000. And I came up with 2,300 houses that were built after the year 2000 that are in the Metro Savannah area. So yes, you can absolutely get a newer house that's in more modern condition that doesn't necessarily need to be totally renovated. And I did not even include condos and townhouses in the search. These are only freestanding houses. Wow, that number is unbelievable. Okay, so pros, cons. We already know that it's challenging for all of you guys to put due diligence, just different type of state. So you guys win on that big time. I'm already moving out. <laughs> so you guys win. Uh, two, you guys win that you are on the beach. We're not, but we have the lakes. Three, both of us have international airports. Four, universities. How are you guys we we that? have SCAD, which is the Savannah College of Art and Design, where if you are going to be an artist, a graphic designer, you're going to be in the film industry, SCAD is an amazing school and it is world renowned. That is great. That's the biggest school that we have in the Savannah area. We have, you know, smaller community colleges. We have Georgia Southern extensions, mm -hmm. but really that's the, that's the main college so here we, in the we're, 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 we're definitely winning here. I think also on employment in the Savannah area. So Gulfstream that makes private jets, you know, that song rocking like a G6, Gulfstream mm -hmm. makes the G6s. They are a major employer here. 
as yeah. is the Savannah Port Authority. So those giant yeah. container ships that deliver uh, huge, big containers. Okay, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. that that is here as well other than that our main claim to fame is the travel and tourism industry so hotels restaurants retail stores all of those types of things but you've got the whole you know research triangle area going we, on we've got the it yeah so for all of you guys it people yes and then again google microsoft um apple um gilead you know universities a lot of medical research duke university as i said duke health is huge so hopefully nobody ever needs to use their services you know in a, in a good way but um, you're yes so if you have a big major health issue this is the place to be for sure you're in the best hands so okay so we're good on that um let's go to to go back a little bit to real estate and talk about property taxes. I'll tell you that here for the Wake County, we're looking at around 1% and a lot of our clients that are moving, especially from super expensive states are asking, how much are the taxes? And I'm like, just think 1%. If you want to go to Chapel Hill, it's going to be a little bit more, but what are you guys looking at there? Very, very similar. Roughly 1% yeah. of okay. the sales price of the house. Yep. So I love it when people from New York come down here and they're like, I'm sorry, my property taxes at my house were $20,000 a year. And I'm like, oh, mine are $3,500 a year. They can't even wrap their head around how much less expensive property taxes are here. And I know the next question is going to be funny for you and me because we have very similar hair. Um, this is pertaining to the humidity and to the summer. It is. <laughs> Do you guys see her face? I mean, for people who are curly and go outside and they're like trying to look nice and have an appointment within two minutes, I look like a sheep. It doesn't matter. So <laughs> here's what I decided. It is, it is ridiculously humid here. If you it have is. curly hair, you need to learn how to embrace your curly hair and just yeah. throw away your flat iron. There is no point. I spent all this time to blow my hair out straight a couple weeks ago it looked fabulous the minute i went outside i looked like brazana rosanna dana there is so, just so I'm no assuming point right now it's much better and also i'm assuming you did something with your hair because it looks really classy and nice well thank you it, yes. what are you saying that it doesn't normally look really classy and nice <laughs> i think that it grew you did some changes with your hair in the past year and i have to say as a woman i think that you embracing your gray is uh, all my respect to you. You look wonderful. Aww, you thank you. Well. Thank you. So for yeah. all the women that are coming here or thinking about going to Savannah, good luck. It's the same thing. Humid, humid. We don't really have snow. Maybe a couple of weeks per year and everything closes down in this area. Like, Isn't I'll that so funny? Because we don't have snow plows. We don't have salt trucks. Oh, we have no thing. way to deal with yeah. it. And yeah. in Savannah, we get snow maybe once every seven years, but the oh. schools will be shut for a week because they literally have no idea how to deal with it. So they just wait for the sun to come out and melt it. Okay, so we do get snow every year, I think, but not, we do not. not, not a lot. Okay, so that's we a do not. right there. Okay. Yeah. And then the next one, and uh, you know, tell me if I'm missing something. I think we went through jobs, great jobs. We went through airport, the major things. We went through housing, prices, weather, universities, education, schools, very good schools, I think, in both states. Um, now, this is a big one. And believe it or not, I don't know if you've ever done a video on this, but are you guys ready? Drum roll. What type of bugs do you guys have there? Oh, the bugs. <laughs> yeah. What type of bugs do you guys have there? Because here... Hmm. So we live in a subtropical climate and that means that we do get bugs. Uh, we like to call them palmetto bugs. Really, they're giant cockroaches, but palmetto oh, bugs sound much this? less <laughs> offensive. <laughs> Are those the ones that you don't know? No, they, no, they don't. They don't really make any noise, but they are this big. They are large, and they're not. They don't come because your house is dirty. They just. This is where they live. They like this. This climate. This heat and humidity. Oh. So everybody here pretty much just hires a pest control company who will come and spray every two to three months, and just get rid of them that way. We have alligators here. 
I have a pond behind my house and I have seen alligators in that pond before. Now they don't walk up my hill and eat my dog, but they, they are in there. So yes, we, the wild, that's a palmetto bug. Yeah. They're very attractive, aren't they? Ugh. So I think, we um, I don't love those. I, I thought they were them. called cockroaches. Uh, no? Palmetto bug sounds much less offensive, don't you think? Oh my, oh my God. I see. I see what you say. So it is a cockroach. It's essentially a cockroach, a giant cockroach. That you know, if, if Mihai hadn't pulled this, I would have lived with this idea of we do not have. And we would have just told everybody, you guys have them, we don't. But we sure as hell have cockroaches. And mm -hmm. okay, so let me ask you something. Then give, give it to me. Mm -hmm. This is what I thought you meant. You see the confusion? What is this? Cicadas. Cicadas? Yes, Cicadas. we do get those. We don't, we, we, we have this, but it's not. So these are the ones that when you go on the street or at night, you hear this like this sound. The First sound, all, yes. Right? I don't know how to describe it. When you're sitting out on your screen porch or your deck in the evening and you hear this like constant buzz, right. they're up in the trees. Right. They don't, they don't bother you. They don't sting. They don't fly after you and swarm. They're like up in the trees, but you hear that sound. Um, we right. have a lot of frogs here too, tons of frogs and boy, frogs love to talk. I had no idea. Frogs can make all kinds of noises. So yeah, it's been, it's been interesting to move here where there's so much wildlife. Well, you got, are you enjoying this by the way, people, <laughs> if you're enjoying it and you've made it to the palmetto cockroach slash whatever they're called and alligators, please subscribe. Give us some good questions there in the comments and just ask us more. We would be more than happy to jump on a call with you, both me and Karin and her team. So definitely ask us. I think we've kind of touched on ma the major things um, and, you know, maybe shopping, but I think shopping is very similar. We do have the Wagmans, the Whole Foods, the Trader Joe's. Believe it or not, I had to have a Trader Joe's when I came from California. That was my biggest thing. Is there a Trader Joe's? In, in North there Carolina? is no Trader Joe's in Savannah. So no I'm very Joe's. excited. We finally got a Costco last year, but we do oh. not have a Trader Joe's. We have one Whole Foods in the entire Savannah metro area. We do have Aldi. Now I heard that Aldi and Trader Jones are owned by brothers. And, yeah. So if we have Aldi's, why do we not have Trader Joe's? But I as of this moment, do you don't. know? Trader Joe's, I don't know. have you ever shopped in Trader Joe's? Say no? that again. Have you ever shopped at Trader Joe's? Oh yes, I love Trader Joe's. When oh, I lived in California, we were there all the time. Okay. Oh, those gorgonzola cheese crackers, girl, I can do some damage to that box of gorgonzola cheese crackers. They are so good. I love that store. Yeah, and no. I, think, I think this content is amazing because even though I think a lot of people decide based on, again, jobs, maybe schooling, housing, there are these small little things and then the communities, right? The values, diversity, which by the way, I know we haven't touched, but Raleigh is a very diverse area, the RTP area. People from all over the world come here. Again, jobs, right? And medical field, IT. So um, from, I can't wait to, to host you here. And I know you guys have great restaurants, but I, as a Romanian girl that moved to the US in 2005, can definitely enjoy a good coffee. And I definitely appreciate a good croissant and some European bakeries. And I love to sit out and just chat um, with friends over some international food and really cool cuisine. So you would kill me if you would put me somewhere in the middle of a rural place that has one store. And like, I would not be able, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to overreact. I would be able to survive, but it's, it's a big, driving factor for from a diversity perspective all right so we've definitely talked and um, touched a lot of great subjects in my opinion so let's end with this question how are you guys doing on sports and outdoor activities generally you had to go there didn't you yeah to. we <laughs> we do not have any sports teams we have the savannah <laughs> bananas which is a minor league baseball uh, and they are freaking awesome. So this is okay. funny. They used to be called the Savannah Sand Nats. Okay. Not the greatest name. Um, they sold that team to somebody else. They got a new team. They had a contest of what should we call this team? They had a contest where they asked for people to give them suggestions. 
And the people voted for the Savannah Bananas, which I just thought was the dumbest name ever. However, when you go to these games, the guy that owns the team dresses in a banana suit. They are so fun. They're out there doing crazy things. The players are like dancing and just silly, 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 but it's so enjoyable. But that is truly the only sports team that we have. No football, no hockey, no basketball. Ah, oh, got it. So I think we're winning here, you guys. Yes, you definitely kick our butts when it comes to sports. We are kicking your butts. Um, but we can go surfing. So there's that. Yes, yes. I mean, do you know that we have a cricket field? Here really? In Israel, cricket out of everything. Yeah, I mean, we have basketball. Uh, we have great soccer. You know, you know, of course, there's there's a bunch happening here. But cricket was one of the things that even surprised me. Um, it's supposed to host a bunch of... Um, pros and great teams and supposed to maybe host the I'm not sure if I'm saying this right but let me just say let me just um, make sure I'm, I'm telling you the correct thing so cricket in Morrisville um, and which by the way Morrisville is an all-america town and both Morrisville Apex Kerry, Raleigh were constantly voted as best places to live in the country. So a lot of attraction from that perspective because they're not as big, which by the way, did you know that you can walk downtown Raleigh? You can walk the whole thing. Maybe it's like a 25, 30 minute walk. That's how small downtown Raleigh is. I didn't realize it was that small. That's very comparable to Savannah. I mean, our downtown area is probably a mile long and maybe 10 or 15 blocks wide. It's it's yeah. really not very big at all. Yeah, so let me let me give you this. Well, actually, I guess maybe we could put some, um, um, some information in our links there so you guys can find anything that you might be interested in. But yeah, definitely also golf. There's a bunch of golf here, by the way. Probably you guys have a lot of golf. We have a ton of golf as well. Right. Yep. In fact, Hilton Head is right across the river right. from Savannah. And Hilton has more golf courses per capita than any other place in the country. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to golf, Hilton Head is the place. Okay. So in 2018, the town of Morrisville hosted our first international cricket matches at uh, Church Street Park here. So it's definitely um, going to host minor league cricket finals. This was just um, posted here in 2022, August 18. And so definitely a lot happening here. But then again, we don't have surfing. So I don't know. I really like surfing. <laughs> I really like the water. Do you want to help me buy a house there, please? If you would like to buy a vacation home in Savannah, I would be happy to help you. Oh, wow. So everybody, let's buy homes in Raleigh and in Savannah. Are you thinking about coming to Raleigh, North Carolina? Well, the link is down below. Please schedule a Zoom call with me and I'll put Karin's link there as well. Again, thank you so much for being here with me. I hope we've given you a lot of great information. We do have many, many videos that we post every single week for all of you guys. So you can be the first ones to know what's happening in the market here and in other states. So thanks again for watching. Connect with me, schedule a call at any time. Bye Karin. <laughs> Take care.